Hello, my friends. <laughs> he who is cruel to animals becomes hard also in his dealings with men. We can judge the heart of a man by his treatment of animals. Immanuel Kant, German philosopher. There is something in us that is triggered when we see an animal in distress. When we hear a puppy yelp or a cat mule looking for its mother. It is not only pets, it also extends to wild animals as well. The desire to help an injured animal often stems from a deep empathetic response triggered by witnessing a vulnerability or suffering of another living being. Humans are naturally inclined to extend care and compassion, especially towards those who cannot communicate their distress verbally. The sight of an injured animal can invoke a visceral emotional reaction, prompting individuals to intervene and provide assistance. This empathetic connection taps into our innate sense of responsibility and empathy, compelling us to take action and offer comfort to a creature in need. And what Mr. Kant said is absolutely true, at least to me. See, I judge everyone on how they treat their animals. And if they treat them badly, I want nothing to do with them because you know that they have no love or decency in their heart. And that leads us into our dear Ambie. Today's video is going to be about Ambie's smallest victims. So please keep in mind that this video is going to be heavy. It is going to be taxing, but it is a story that needs to be told. While Casey, Crystal, Destiny, Beck, and Wifey can come and tell their stories if they wanted or needed, Monkey, Smokey, Ringo, Charlie, Twinkie, Leia, Cash, Wasabi, Jax, Scarlet, Gracie, and Rarity all do not have a voice. And since Ambi and the others will not speak for them, will not step up for them, and will not look Ambi in her face and make sure they're safe, we need to. So I invite you to get some tea in your snowflake mug, get you some Cocoa Puffs, grab your Karina Kermit, and put on your Omega shirt. Please prepare yourself for a heavy video and settle in as I make this as enjoyable as possible. While I make sure you know all about Amberlynn Reed's Smallest Victims. Get your face! <laughs> Show everybody. Why are you so shy? Roll around. Do you roll? Okay, he does not act the same when I get this out. I don't understand. Monks, come on. Show them what you do. Come on, lay down. All right, let's just jump right into the deep end and start with animal abuse. This is the intentional ugly stuff. No beating around the bush. People think I'm an animal abuser. We're talking about the actions that show a total disregard for our furry pals. It could be physical abuse, like downright cruelty, or delving into the dark corners of activities like dogfighting. And let's not forget about those questionable experiments without a hint of ethical thought. It's about folks who, for whatever reason, just can't seem to care about the well-being of animals. You know, places like Petland. Look at I say hello. Hello, YouTube. Look at this little thing. <laughs> he wants my necklace. Legit. Oh my god. Okay, okay. Okay. Want the ring? Let's get the ring. Let's get the ring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Give him your brain. Okay. Watch. What is this thing? What is this thing? <laughs> He's just having the time of his life. Aww. He's all relaxed with you and then playful with me. I ain't got nothing to play with. Oh, buddy. That is so cute. He's camera shy, I think. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps going higher and higher. 
This tongue is so weird looking. Come here. Come here. Oh my goodness. I want to ring. Put it back down. Come on. <laughs> what is that? Oh it loves me. Oh my gosh, look. Wait, I'm gonna take a let me take a selfie. Fair right now. Is this allowed? Yeah. <gasps> Can we get it? No. I want them all. Can we just have a zoo? Do they bite? Yeah, but it's not hard. Like it's really not. And when you're done, give them that one. Do you want to hold it? I'm gonna reach in. Okay. okay. Which Ambi once frequented which are notorious for puppy meals and kitten meals, which we will get into later. Now, let's imagine a world where harm is intentional. That's the realm of animal abuse. It's the dark side where actions are fueled by malicious intent, whether it's a poor creature getting physically hurt or tossed into some sketchy activities. It's the deliberate nature of these actions that define abuse. Now, let's shift gears to animal neglect. Neglect is when an animal endures harsh conditions and try to survive. <laughs> Aww, love you too. Imagine a furry friend left outdoors in a snowstorm without a warm spot or a pet denied a visit to a vet when they're sick. It is not just the factors, but also... Allowing your pet to gain a ton of weight or allowing their nails to grow long and curl. The lack of malicious intent doesn't make it any less impactful on the animal's well-being. I think you might need to read this book, monks. You're looking a little chunk chunk. Now, here's the thing. Abuse and neglect often do a very twisted dance together. Animals dealing with one might also be dealing with the other. It's like they're caught up in this two-for-one deal of a not-so-great treatment. No! <laughs> he smells like shit. Why? He never smells. Recognizing this overlap is crucial and is a loud call for a comprehensive game plan to tackle both of the issues head on. Before we delve any deeper, however, I feel it is very important that we know the difference between the two so we know exactly what we are seeing when it comes to Ambi. Because while I would say that you are perhaps not an animal abuser other than by observation at best. You have your little notes area, your weekly goals. We have a dog here named Trixie. You are extremely neglectful. Empathy. Hmm. Ambi seems to be a pattern in these videos. Huh. Empathy is like a secret that makes our connection with animals extra special. I like you for who you are. You are queen. People are so cruel to you when you are the best cat dog mama. You're such an empath and I would love to listen to the rain with you. Oh, you're sweet. Thank you. It's this magical ability that allows us to understand and feel what our furry friends might be experiencing. When we empathize with animals, it's like we're tapping into their secret world of joy, pain, fear, and love. Totally forgot that I was vlogging yesterday. I just, after I got off of work, uh, Destiny and I got really busy. We went Christmas shopping. We did it early, so that's a thing. Say hi. <laughs> He's just relaxing. <clears throat> Doesn't he have the prettiest green eyes? <laughs> oh, yeah. So, I woke up. Oh, I'm sorry, did I scare you? You pushed him. I <laughs> mean, too. I mean, too, I love you so much. Sometimes when I say, give me kissy, he'll give me kissy, but watch. Give me kissy. Oh, are you being mean now? Give me kissy. Give me kissy. <laughs> well, he really does do it. Anyways, um. This connection forms the basis for treating them with care and the respect that they deserve. In the world of looking after our animal buddies, empathy is the power that inspires us to create a better living condition. 
stand up against cruelty, and make sure that they lead happy lives. Empathetic folks are the ones who champion strong animal protection laws. Uh, lend a hand in rescues. Destiny! <laughs> Why is her Did she on? pee? It's wet over here. I just put my foot in it. Oh my. Leia! Did you pee? Is that what this is? Smell it. Or jump into action that tackles problems like too many strays. Jax isn't fixed. We didn't feel the need to get him fixed. I don't think all animals should get fixed. Like, I just don't. I think, you know, a few should, and that's that. But Jax is never going to have the opportunity to get no one pregnant. We we don't have to worry about that, huh, Jaxy? Boo, boo, baby. You, you. Abandonment issues and neglect. They understand the struggles and joys of animals, making sure their four-legged pals get the care that they need to thrive. <laughs> So I am babysitting. Oh, this is Cash. Say hi. <laughs> I think we have a camera shy baby. <laughs> Literally, this little baby is so easy to watch. Look at him. Just sleeping. He loves soft blankets, so. I got your tail. I got your tail. <laughs> oh, Ambie, did you think I was going to leave cash out of this? Not a f chance. I digress. It's not about the basics. Empathy and animal care means diving into the emotional side, too. It's about building bonds, recognizing each animal's unique personality, and offering not just care but genuine companionship do my makeup yeah yeah baby whether it's a wagging tail a purr or a nuzzle empathetic caregivers understand the language of animals and respond with the love and attention they crave in the end empathy and animal care go hand in paw creating a world where compassion rules when we treat animals with empathy, we are not just making their lives better. We're also shaping a community where kindness to all living beings is the top priority. It's the secret ingredient that makes our world a little brighter. One paw print at a time. It is heartbreaking to acknowledge that some people use their power to control and harm animals. Deja vu? Anyone? Not just me, right? This creates a disturbing dynamic where vulnerability is exploited. Deja vu again. When individuals engage in acts of animal abuse, they are not just hurting the innocent creature, they are feeding off of a twisted sense of dominance and control. Deja vu. Look how sunburnt you are. Let's see what worse on here. Oh, no, I know. I'm a sure sunburnt. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> what are you doing? Look at all those freckles. You got the freckles? <laughs> oh! I don't want your stinky foot. Why is... Okay, her crotch is on my neck. Okay. <laughs> this can take various forms from physical violence to neglect, all driven by the need to establish authority over beings that can't fight back. Behind the scenes, those who abuse animals often grapple with their own feelings of frustration or inadequacy. For them, hurting a defenseless animal becomes a way to cope with their inner turmoil, a misguided attempt to fill the void in their lives. My baby wasabi is in its teenage years. You independent little man. Oh. <laughs> Stay with mama. Don't leave me. Oh. <laughs> Is that your brother? <laughs> this toxic power dynamic not only harms the animal, but also poses a broader risk to society. As research has shown, a disturbing link between animal abuse and subsequent violence towards humans. Breaking this cycle demands a comprehensive approach. 
Strengthening animal welfare laws is crucial to holding abusers accountable, ensuring they face consequences for their actions. Equally important is raising awareness about the connection between animal abuse and the larger issues of power dynamics and violence. He was three months when we got him. We got him July 22nd. Okay, so what does that make you? By fostering empathy and compassion, society can work together by dismantling the harmful power and control dynamics that lead to suffering of our furry friends. It's about recognizing the shared vulnerability we all have and choosing kindness over cruelty because a world where power is wielded responsibly is a better world for everyone, humans and animals alike. Bringing a furry friend into your life is a real heartwarming decision. But it also comes with a real financial commitment. It's more than just the initial adoption or purchase fee. There's a whole spectrum of costs to consider. Because I really, really, really wanted to adopt a cat. And at the time, I didn't have a job and I didn't have money to do so. So I sold my iPod and I sold my um, 3DS XL because I really, really just wanted to adopt a kitten. And I did, and I got wasabi, and I'm so happy about it. From regular vet checkups, to vaccinations, and preventative meds, to unexpected health issues, the financial responsibility of having a pet extends beyond everyday basics. Picture those moments when your pet needs immediate care and you want to ensure they receive the best attention. That's where the financial commitment truly comes into play. Today was my day off. I know this is probably going to sound so weird to some people, but I'm going to go in and volunteer. It's a lot because I'm going to miss Destiny while she's at work and I don't want to just like sit here and do nothing. But a big chunk of it is also because I really, really enjoy just being around the residents and helping them when I can or talking to them when I can. Also, Wasabi is, who do you think he's pooping out blood? Yeah, he's pooping out blood. We don't know what it's from. Responsible pet ownership means embracing the joy and companionship they bring while also being ready for the financial journey that comes with giving them the best life possible. Now, this is not to say that once you have the animal, you're irresponsible for not having the money. But to pawn items to afford an animal and then dodge the necessary checks and paperwork of a responsible adoption agency... That makes you irresponsible. I sure hope so. I put Again, in, or he's uh, playing in his poop. I put the adoption fee in. You know what? I will touch briefly here on Petland since Amber and Destiny seem to love Petland. Where's our kitten at? We didn't get it. No, we didn't get it because... It took one Google search to see the glaring issues that Petland has presented over the years. And the biggest ones is its use of puppy and kitten meals to stock their animals. In the United States, over 93% of all pet stores do not sell puppies or kittens. But stores like PetSmart and Petco do run adoptions. <laughs> it's trying to get it in there. <laughs> hey, that's me, ma'am. <laughs> of shelters animals because Amber is right. Like no pet should ever be in a shelter or in. But none of your animals have ever come from a shelter. Instead, you have chosen to go with a place where 99% of their animals come from mills. Let's give Amber a better view of what a puppy mill looks like while I explain this to you a little more. Over the years, Petland has been accused of allowing their puppies to remain sick and close to death before getting proper veterinary care. This is according to the Humane Society of America and many previous employees. These puppies and animals are left to suffer and eventually die in their plexiglass cages. One Petland was found to have one puppy and 31 dead bunnies in their freezers. That is where you decided to go and support Amber. That is where you gave your money rather than help to shelter animal and do the proper wait period and followed the proper channels. An argument could be made that you helped that animal, but that is a misleading argument. The truth is, is that you gave these places your business when you were on the right track to help a local shelter, all because you didn't want to wait. The reason that they gave you Wasabi and possibly Scarlet so easily is because like you, they do not care about the animal or where they go once their use is up. We didn't get it because um, the adoption thing like takes forever and plus we wanna go to Petland tomorrow and they have other kittens there. <sighs> okay, gotta calm down. Okay, 
When you're going to adopt your next animal friend, make sure where you're going is reputable or go to your local shelter. Any sort of puppy or kitten mail or backyard breeder should be avoided and anywhere that supports such practices should also be avoided. There are thousands of animals that need a home without supporting those facilities that are only in it to make a profit and do not care about the well-being or health of the animals while they're in their care or in yours. Now that we've laid bear some definitions of Ambie's actions and fully grasped the heartbreaking impact on her animals, the burning question lingers, where's the proof? And how exactly are these innocent creatures being affected? The evidence we seek isn't just a paper trail or a set of cold facts. It's the collective heartbeat of compassion and concern for these voiceless companions. It's in the stories whispered by witnesses, the pain reflected in the eyes of these animals, and the untold suffering etched into their daily lives. To understand their plight, we must go beyond the surface, underneath the words and definitions we fling at her and delve into the very essence of their existence. Gathering proof isn't merely a legal formality or for entertainment in a video. It's a shared mission to amplify the silent cries of those who cannot speak for themselves, demanding justice, empathy, and a chance at a life free of torment. And, lucky for us, Amber has recorded and laid out everything for us. The constant bouncing of animals from one home to another inflicts a significant toll on their well-being, both emotionally and physically. Is where's the kitty? It is what the first place where she went to get a kitten from when looking for a wasabi after getting rid of, I mean, uh, losing Gracie, was trying to avoid. Obviously, we wouldn't have gotten rid of a Scarlet. We would have tried to make Scarlet and Wasabi get along a little better, at least. You know, it really is sad. I think of Scarlet often, but she is living with Destiny's friend. The wait period, paperwork, and possible home check they would have also made would have made sure that Scarlet would have gotten along with the other animals in the home so that she wouldn't have had to been bounced to another home. Animals, especially pets, form a deep bond with their human caregivers, and the instability of constantly changing environments can induce stress, anxiety, and a sense of insecurity. Each transition disrupts their routine, leaving them vulnerable to emotional distress, behavioral changes, and even health issues. Was getting a cat and a dog around the same time, so we were going to have three pets. For these animals, a stable and secure home provides them a foundation for trust and a sense of belonging. The stress from bouncing from home to home not only affects their mental and emotional states, but can also impact their overall health and ability to form a lasting connection with their human companion. It underscores the importance of responsible pet ownership, emphasizing the need for commitment and stability to ensure the well-being of our furry friends. Imagine your loyal canine companion or affectionate feline friend facing challenges of obesity, like a certain ambi we all know. A condition that not only affects their physical health, but also influences their overall joy and vitality. Sure you've all noticed my poor monkey baby is an obese doggy, huh? The root cause of pet obesity often stem from the very love and care we provide. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a part of me is glad he's gained weight, more weight, because now he can't climb the fence anymore. Because I wouldn't have to go uh, chasing after him. Those extra treats we offer, the larger portions we sometimes unknowingly serve, and the lack of opportunity for active play can lead our pets down the weight-related issues. Chihuahua is supposed to be six pounds, but Twinkie's not like a normal Chihuahua. She's just a little bigger. Pet obesity is more than just an aesthetic concern. You guys, a lot of people are always like, you don't take care of your animals. Look how skinny, look how fat, look how horrible, look how this. Oh my God, look at her nails. Oh my gosh, listen to her breathe. That's what you guys say about my animals. Rude, first of all, geez. <laughs> well, no, it is not rude, Ambi. It poses a significant health risk. Consider your dog struggling with joint problems, making every step hurt, or your cat facing difficulties in jumping or climbing due to excessive weight. 
The health implications go beyond the visible, reaching into the realms of diabetes, heart complications, and respiratory challenges. Preventing and managing obesity in pets require a mindful and compassionate approach, providing a balanced diet tailored to their specific needs, carefully controlling portion size, and incorporating regular exercise into their routine are key components. Um, obviously I was like, yeah, I know she is a little bit overweight. I kind of feed her too much. That's never a bad thing. If you feed your animal too little, then yeah, that is a little bad. It is about understanding the importance of play and physical activities in their lives. A ball toss, a game of fetch, or interactive toys for mental stimulation. Veterinary involvement is crucial. Regular checkups allow for monitoring health changes, weight changes, identifying certain health issues, and receiving personalized guidance on nutrition and exercise. Body condition scoring becomes a shared language between pet owners and veterinarians, helping assess whether a pet is underweight, at an ideal weight, or struggling with excess pounds. Addressing a pet's obesity is a commitment to their well-being. It involves acknowledging that as caregivers our choices impact their lives profoundly. When I love my animals more than I love anything or anybody like in my life. As evidenced by your own weight loss journey, Ambie, you have no idea what applies here. It's a journey of creating a lifestyle that prioritizes health and joy and vitality for our cherished companions. In this shared endeavor, we strive to provide not just care, but a life filled with vibrancy and moments of pure, unbridled happiness for our furry friends. Long nails on our furry friends, be they cats or dogs, might seem like a minor issue, but it can have some real implications on their well-being and our shared experiences. Picture your dog trying to walk with discomfort or your cat inevitably scratching you during a playful interaction. Untrimmed nails can lead to all of these scenarios. Beyond the visible discomfort, it can affect their posture and even contribute to joint problems over time about the claws which you guys seem to be literally obsessed with in the comments again he said that her claws are perfect and he said that in his words that they are perfect he said that the that he has seen taking care of your pet's nails involve regular trimming and sometimes filing or grinding it's not always the most comfortable experience for them. So introducing positive reinforcement and gradually desensitizing can make it a smoother process. If you're unsure if your pet is particularly sensitive, seeking guidance from a vet or a professional groomer can be helpful. That's his way of saying, I love you. Don't lick. Be a good boy. Don't lick. Yeah, don't let him lick me because we all know where his tongue goes. <laughs> Hot monk. <laughs> Tell him bye. Tell him bye. But it is not just Twinkie that we had this issue with. Ultimately, keeping those nails in check is a small but meaningful part of being a responsible pet owner. Of course, walks can help grind down their nails, but keep in mind, the smaller your dog is, the harder it is for walks to grind down their nails, like Twinkie. Ultimately, keeping those nails in check is a small but meaningful part of being a responsible pet owner. It's about making sure our pets are comfortable, happy, and our shared moments are as enjoyable as possible. So next time you hear those little taps on the floor, it might be a sign that it's time for a nail trim and a chance to enhance the well-being of our four-legged companions. Overfeeding our beloved pets and sharing human foods with them can introduce some serious health risks that demand our attention and responsibility as caregivers. The issue of obesity is not confined to humans. It affects our animal companions as well, as stated. So these are glass. They're room and linen spray and salted coconut and mahogany. Okay. So I got one for my bedroom and one for my living room. So I love when my apartment smells good. So I also got some more wax melts because I love them. They're both Yankee Candle. I got Moonlit Cave and Warm Luxe Cashmere. So that is my little haulage. Overindulgence in treats and excessive portions can lead to weight gain, exerting undue pressure on their joints and organs. The consequences extend beyond physical discomfort, potentially paving the way to severe health 
conditions such as diabetes, cardiovascular problems, and arthritis. Sharing arm meals with our pets requires careful consideration of potential dangers lurking in certain human foods. I didn't notice I dropped one and Twinkie found it. Alexa, can dogs have raw broccoli? Raw broccoli is not considered poisonous to dogs. It looks like <laughs> Twinkie gets the broccoli. <laughs> Actually, cooked broccoli in moderation is okay for dogs, but large quantity is bad because of the chemical isocyathionate. It can cause some digestive issues. I do want you guys to know that I'm the queen of like moderation. I lost 89 pounds before. Right. Other common items like chocolate, onions, and artificial sweeteners can be toxic to animals, posing a real threat to their well-being. Beyond the acute dangers, feeding pets human foods can disrupt their nutritional balance, impacting their overall health over time. Twinkie. Twinkie likes hot Cheetos. Now, I'm going to be fair here and say that while it's usually fine for dogs to snack on Cheetos, it's crucial to keep an eye on how much they're munching. Too many of these treats can cause health issues like obesity, diabetes, and heart disease in our furry friends. So if your dog has indulged in a Cheeto feast, it's a good idea to switch them to a healthier diet. Now, when it comes to hot Cheetos, we need to be more cautious. These snacks contain chili powder, which could lead to stomach problems and even pancreatitis in dogs. Every time she begs for food, she sounds like a pig. She's like... <laughs> if your dog has gone overboard on a hot Cheetos feast, it's best to get them to the vet without delay. But I also want to state that if Ambie is sharing hot Cheetos, which she just admitted to here, then she is sharing God knows what with Twinkie, causing obesity and therefore that is neglect. Twinkie's whining because she likes hot Cheetos. But I would eat every one myself. The gravity of these issues underscore the importance of informed and responsible pet ownership. Providing a diet tailored to your specific dog's needs and consulting a veterinarian regarding a suitable nutrition and portion control are critical steps to ensuring a long-term health and vitality to our cherished animal companions. And he has gained lots of weight because we love him so much and we feed him snacks. Um. It's a commitment to their well-being that goes beyond a momentary joy of sharing a meal emphasizing the need for care in their dietary choices. Additionally, one specific human food that demands heightened caution when it comes to our canine friends is pesto. While it may be a delectable sauce for us, pesto often contains ingredients that can be extremely hazardous to dogs. Garlic and onions are common components in traditional pesto recipes and can cause severe damage to a dog's red blood cell count, leading to a condition known as hemolytic anemia. This can result in symptoms such as lethargy, weakness, and pale gums, requiring immediate veterinary attention. Furthermore, pesto recipes frequently include garlic in amounts that may be considered safe for humans, but can be toxic to dogs even in small quantities. Ingesting pesto, especially if homemade or containing concentrated garlic extracts, poses a considerable risk to a dog's health. As responsible pet owners, it is crucial to be vigilant about the ingredients and foods that we share with our dogs or cats, or leave the remnants where they might be able to get it, avoiding potential hazards like a garden-heavy pesto to safeguard their well-being. You saying that you called the vet is not good enough. It is not acceptable for someone that was willing to force one of your victims to drive to the Cheesecake Factory three hours away to leave it and then just call the vet when you think they might have ingested pesto. This means, Ambie, that if it was marker all over Twinkie, you are a shitty dog owner. If it was pesto and you did not take her to the vet to make sure that she was okay, then you are a shitty dog owner. Period. No way around it. No matter what you did here, you are a shitty dog owner in this situation. But seeing as that Twinkie seemed to be fine, it was marker, you just wanted attention, and thus, you are a shitty dog owner. First and foremost, I'm going to get this out of the way. Yelling can instill fear and anxiety in your furry friend. Your pet may start associating your voice with a negative experience, leading to stress and a breakdown of trust between you and them. Yeah, no, don't chew on shoes, baby! 
First it was a tampon, then it was pants, and now it's shoes. No! This intern can result in a behavioral problem and overall decrease in their well-being. Furthermore, pets might not understand why you're yelling. While you might be expressing a frustration or displeasure, they might misinterpret your tone as a threat, causing confusion and making it challenging for them to associate your reaction with a specific behavior. Yelling is often counterproductive as a training method. Instead of effectively communicating what you want your pet to do, it typically conveys that you're upset. No, let us stop! On the contrary, positive reinforcement, which involves rewarding good behavior with treats, praise, or play, is more likely to be effective in encouraging, you know, desired behaviors. Beyond hindering the training process, yelling may lead to a fear-based response, making your pet less receptive to learning or more focused on avoiding punishment. Instead of resorting to yelling, it is recommended to follow something a bit different. Because honestly, if I had to listen to Ambi yell at me, I would ignore her and do anything to get away from her as well. Training your dog and cat is all about being positive, consistent, and patient. For dogs, use positive reinforcement, like treats or playtime, to reward good behavior. Keep your commands consistent, clear, and pair them with gestures. Socialize your dog by introducing them to various environments and people. Be patient during training and redirect unwanted behavior instead of punishing. Using physical punishment in dog training is discouraged for several important reasons. Dogs, like humans, thrive in environments built on trust and positive relationships. When physical punishments are employed, it can damage the bond between a dog and its owner, eroding the trust that is crucial for effective training. Dogs subjected to physical punishment may experience fear and anxiety, hindering their ability to learn and respond positively. <laughs> How do you get through being a family of five? It was really hard for me, honestly. This one was not an easy child. <laughs> No <laughs> Moreover, such methods can lead to confusion, as dogs may not always associate the punishment with the behavior that is being corrected. Positive reinforcement, which involves rewarding desired behaviors, is generally more effective and humane. I really hope that the roommate did not hit like you and Jet Destiny. No, Leia's eating the hey. cat food. <laughs> no. Leia. Come on. No. Whoop, never mind. Additionally, using physical punishment can pose a safety risk as it may trigger a defensive aggression in some dogs. By opting for positive training methods, owners can ensure a happier, healthier relationship with their pets, fostering a secure and loving environment for both of them. In whatever case, avoid punishment and focus on positive reinforcement to build trust. Training is an ongoing process and building a strong bond with your pet is key. If you encounter challenges, seeking advice from a professional trainer or behavioralist can be beneficial. <music> Neglecting proper veterinary care for our beloved animals can have far-reaching consequences that impact their overall health and quality of life. Regular vet checkups is a vital cornerstone of responsible pet ownership. These appointments go beyond routine vaccinations. They provide comprehensive assessments of our pet's well-being. Early detection of potential health issues, preventative measures against diseases, and administration of vaccinations are essential components of these visits. And you know what? There is an infamous clip that I want to put in, but there is somebody that captures my anger so much better than I ever could. Good, sir. Would you mind? beginning because i noticed twinkie was acting different last night and it was just like little tiny things like usually when i come home she'll like jump on me um she likes to jump on the couch and jump onto our bed and stuff like that and i realized she wasn't doing those things okay and what got me really worried is you guys know how um my bed is on the floor twinkie wouldn't even jump on that she went up it that's not good that's not good at all she was in so much pain that she was shaking so oh my god that poor doggy I hope there's something that the vet could say to make me feel better. Like, what is what what to make you feel better? Your dog is hurting, dog. Like, who cares about you and your feelings? 
Your dog sounds like she's in excruciating pain. I almost said excruciating. That's how much I've been watching this girl. She sounds like she's in excruciating pain. Like, I'd be more focused on making sure my dog was okay. Not how my feelings are. <laughs> Those aren't going to help your dog. Okay, you need to take your dog to the vet. I'm worried, though. Like, I can't... I felt so bad leaving her. Oh, but we're going to go out to eat now, too? Oh, Okay. <laughs> Okay, look, look at the people around there like, look at these fucking people. I can't. Are you yeah. Where I'm are they at? Restaurant, Chili's. How'd They're you like at Chili's. Oh, you know what? You know what? I'm going to do something I never do. Let's see. Let's see Chili's. No, 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 no. 24-7 vet in Somerset, Kentucky. Okay, this seems promising. The hours, okay. Oh, we need to go to like the website. So about us, locations and hours. Hours of operation, blah, blah, blah. After hours or emergencies, during office hours, call the regular clinic and be prepared to dial extension number 30. After hours, the on-call emergency veterinarian can be reached. After hours, emergency fees will apply if your pet must be seen. So it seems to me... Like it's possible to get your vet, your pet into a vet after hours. Now let's see. We're gonna put this in directions. Let's see. Let's see where the Chili's is. Chili's, Somerset, Kentucky. So the Chili's is a six-minute drive to the hospital. I'm so you know, dude. <laughs> I can't. The things that take priorities in this woman's life are astounding to me. I'm not going to buy this whole we're worried sick, we'll go beyond, I'm the best, best firm. On oh, it's even on the same fucking road. Shocker. Um, I'm not, you know what, I don't know why I'm surprised. I don't know why I'm surprised. I don't know why I'm surprised in the slightest. That entire sob story was just to make you feel bad for her. That's really what that was about. Thank you, darling, and I hope you're doing well. We miss you. Moreover, preventative measures against parasites such as Fleas, ticks, and worms are integral to ensuring our pets lead a healthy and happy life. Infestations can lead to a range of problems, from skin irritations to allergies to more severe internal complications. Routine vet care includes strategies for parasite preventions, safeguarding our pets from these potential threats. Failure to provide proper veterinary care can result in undiagnosed or untreated illnesses, progressing unnoticed. What is this monkey? Oh my god. Monkey, no! Look at what he did! He broke the tree! Monkey, that's bad! Oh god, I guess I gotta clean this up. Ambie? Ambie, he ate Christmas lights! You're just gonna... Okay, yeah, just clean it up. That makes perfect f***ing sense. Anyways... This not only jeopardizes the well-being of our animals, but may also lead to increased financial burdens while, when addressing advanced health issues. <sighs> In essence, responsible pet ownership entails a commitment to regular veterinary care. These visits are not just about medical procedures. They're about actively contributing to the holistic health and happiness of our animal companion. By prioritizing their well-being through proper veterinary care, we ensure that our pets can enjoy a longer, more vibrant, and fulfilling life by our side. When our furry friends roam off-leash, it might seem like a liberating experience, but it comes with some risks we need to be mindful of. Good girl. You are such a good girl. Where are you? There it is. A dog running free might chase after wildlife, approach others too enthusiastically, or even find itself in the midst of traffic. But yeah, Twinkie sometimes gets sick, so she ended up puking. But I have a blanket in there, and it happened on the blanket, so at least it didn't get in the car. Twinkie! Look at her wandering off. Like she owns the place. I'm gonna go get her. Twinkie door! 
You going party? Yeah. Are you almost done? No. Come here. I don't know what is up there. Some barn. That's crazy. It's not just about their safety, but also about creating a stress-free environment for everyone nearby. Now, let's talk about retractable leashes. It's seemingly a convenient tool, but has been known to, for its own set of hazards. Picture being in a busy area with a thin, nearly invisible cord extended. It's not just a potential trip hazard for you and others. It's also a recipe for unexpected chaos. In a split second, that retractable leash can turn from a convenience to a safety concern, causing burns or cuts in an emergency situation. What's more, these leashes might unintentionally teach your furry pals bad habits. If they learn that pulling extends the length of the leash, it can lead to a less than pleasant walking experience for everyone involved. And let's not forget that if Twinkie is six feet away from Ambie on a retractable leash. All right, we walked up the hill, didn't we, baby girl? That means we get to walk down it. There is no way you are going to be able to waddle over to her in time to save her if a bigger dog attacks on one of your <laughs> walks because you thought a retractable leash would be better. So in our pursuit of convenience, it's crucial to balance it with responsibility, opting for leashes that offer control along with some good old training and attentive handling. That all ensures that our walks are enjoyable, safe, and incident-free for both us and our furry companions. Oh, I know. You thought I might not bring this up, but here we go. <laughs> How do you get through being a family of five? It was really hard for me, honestly. This one was not an easy child. <laughs> No bite. Oh, the authorities. Get over a more so she's more. <laughs> Drop the cat if you need to. Just like. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> Stop! I'm not gonna do it. Come on. You mean me as well? Wait, what do I say again? I'm like go of him. Jesus Christ! I was like. <laughs> Because the dog's back there. Oh, she's she's sleeping. She's okay. she's not sleeping. Yes. Hey, she's hey. Not. No, down. This is this has been five minutes. Of oh my god. Say bye, Chaplin. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> it was like a little limp noodle. He was like, boop. fell through the cracks. <laughs> oh, you did so precious. So cute. He is. He's like a little baby. When it comes to our furry companions, subjecting them to physical abuse or excessive restraint is not just a matter of wrong actions, but a profound betrayal of the trust they place in us. The repercussions of such actions extend far beyond immediate pain and injury. A scenario where a pet, whether a loyal dog or an independent cat, endures physical harm. Whoa. Come on, did you play? <laughs> Get him! Get him, Tinky! Get him! Get him, Twinkie! Aww, he's so sweet! Oh, look a hot mess! Look how sweet! The visible moons may heal, but the emotional scars run deep. These animals, capable of forming strong bonds with humans, experience anxiety, fear, and a heartbreaking breakdown of the trust they once had in us. Come here. Is it cold? No, it's actually not. Really? Really. It's good. Oh, it's warmer than last time. Yeah, I don't go down with my stuff on. Put it under a towel. Huh? Put it uh, under a towel. In the pocket of here. Okay, it's water. Okay. Oh! Did you fall? <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> no way. <laughs> footage there. Yeah, you went down. <laughs> That's funny. Pretty Sean, come on, you swim. Go swim. Look at her. Look at her. She's like, sure. I'm about to get in. The aftermath doesn't stop there. Behavioral problems emerge as these pets grapple with the trauma. My baby wasabi is in its teenage years. You independent little man. Oh. <laughs> Stay with mama. Don't leave me. Dogs might respond with aggression, a protective shield against the perceived threats, or they may exhibit a submissive behavior born out of fear. Most abused animals are very like hesitant and like they have a certain way of acting and Twinkie was not like that at all. Undesirable behaviors like incessant barking or destructive chewing become coping mechanisms. Consider the impact on the relationship. Trust that unspoken agreement between human and animal shatters. The once strong bond weakens, making it difficult for our pets to view us with the same affection. Even improper restraint is insidious. Con it contributes to a loss of trust and amplifies fear responses. Beyond the emotional toll, there are physical consequences. <laughs> Come on, I know you want down. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Come She's on. She's so confused. <sighs> We're um starting to like put all of our like boxes and just items that are done and packed in our dining room <laughs> and we, things we're not keeping well we're keeping that oh. so I put twinkie and she's like what look at it come on oh, oh. <laughs> don't do that <laughs> she, she jumped when i picked her up oh <laughs> you were just a baby Improper handling leads to injuries, sprains, fractures, or damage to internal organs. The respiratory system's vitals for these animals become compromised, adding another layer to their suffering. In the realm of training, the fallout is considerable. The use of forceful methods and physical punishment is counterproductive, as we've covered. Instead of fostering positive learning environment, it instills fear and obstructs the teaching process. He was three months when we got him. We got him July 22nd. Okay, so what does that make you? And let's not forget about the legal aspect here. He says that he gets calls all the time that are legit, but he also gets calls that aren't. So it's his job, and he literally called himself a professional. He had a shirt that literally looked professional even, like with the little thing saying what he was and stuff. Anyways, um, that's his job to go and take the animals. When they're in, a, they're in a bad environment, they're to be taken. Animal cruelty laws exist to protect those vulnerable beings. Inflicting harm can lead to fines, confiscation of the animal, and even criminal charges. So he took a look at her. I was holding her most of the time, but he wanted a picture of her because he wanted to send off and let him know, and he said in his words, that professionally, Twinkie looks great. It's a societal acknowledgement of the gravity of such actions, aiming to deter further instances of cruelty. Now, to be fair, a lot of people have pointed out that Amber did not film this interaction. First of all, you're dumb. <laughs> I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and say that she had the respect not to film a law enforcement professional. Hello. Hi. How you doing? I'm doing all right. As soon as I looked down and saw I was going that fast, and I saw you turn around, I'm like, I'm, I'm pulled over. I appreciate that. I do. I'm so sorry. I got you at 78. Yeah, I'm so sorry. I didn't even realize how fast I was going. 
Have you got any insurance on good stuff um, on your card? I do have insurance. I have my card. Sometimes I can, sometimes I can't. Okay. I'll see what I what it shows. Alright. Uh, on registrations it just it really depends on your insurance company how often they report to the Department of Transportation right. on all that. Okay. I don't think I have my old one in here right now. Okay. Alright. Have you got the registration on the card? Am I good? Yeah, you're good. Is it in the trunk you said? Yeah. Okay. Be careful, I don't want you getting hit. Side <laughs> road. He's actually really nice, so that's good. <laughs> oh, well, tried to help you, Ambie, but you always screw yourself over. In essence, Treating your pets with kindness, using positive reinforcement in training, and respecting boundaries of trust is not just a matter of moral duty. It is the essence, the essence of responsible and compassionate pet ownership. This section will only have clips of people actually helping animals, not filming abuse and laughing. Whether witnessing animal abuse firsthand or encountering it online, our role as witnesses is crucial in ensuring the well-being of our furry companions. When faced with the heart-wrenching sight of animal abuse in person, our natural instinct is to intervene immediately. However, prioritizing safety for both ourselves and the animal is paramount. Instead of confronting the abuser directly, we can discreetly document the incident, taking note of the date, time, and location, and capturing photos or videos if possible. This information becomes instrumental in the steps that follow. And no, it is not to edit them and put them online like some girls, Ambie. The next step involves reaching out to a local animal control, humane society, or law enforcement to report the abuse. Sharing the gathered information and emphasizing the urgency of the situation is essential. Persistent follow-ups ensure that authorities take the appropriate action. If signs of continued abuse are witnessed, staying engaged in the process, providing additional information, and seeking updates are crucial. Beyond official channels, seeking guidance and support through local animal welfare organizations is recommended. They can offer valuable insights into reporting procedures and advocate for the welfare of animals involved. In cases where autonomy is a concern, exploring confidential reporting options ensure our safety while making a difference. Our personal account of the incident is a powerful tool in these situations with a preparedness to provide a witness statement if required. Sharing our experience within the community becomes a call to action, raising awareness about animal abuse and fostering a sense of responsibility towards responsible ownership. Similarly, when encountering animal abuse online, the first rule is not to share or engage with the harmful content. Instead, documenting the incident with screenshots and recordings and details such as usernames, timestamps, is all crucial for the subsequent steps. Reporting the abuse on the platform where it occurred, utilizing reporting features, and including gathered evidence is akin to being a voice for those that cannot speak for themselves. In cases where online abuse appears criminal or possess an immediate threat, contacting local law enforcement is recommended. Simultaneously, reaching out to animal welfare organizations with the evidence collected ensures an effective addressing of online animal abuse. Sharing information about the animal abuse within the online community without spreading harmful content becomes a collective effort to raise awareness and encourage others to report the abuse as well. Connecting with online advocacy groups and dedicated animal welfare provides guidance to the best course of action. Promoting responsible online behavior and educating others about the impact of sharing or participating in animal abuse online becomes our responsibility. In both physical and virtual realms, our compassionate actions contribute to creating a safer space for everyone and play a vital role in the protection of our furry friends. Ambie, you put this story forth. Like it does have to do with like her and like the way that she views uh, the world and how to treat animals and whatever. Um, but she had a dog 
named Cash, who I actually would babysit um, when he was a puppy. And I guess Cash wasn't trained very well. Um, This was, by the way, when um, her and Dana were together. So this dog was not mine. Um, So I would babysit Cash. So I grew to love Cash, obviously. But I guess um, Cash ended up biting like a little girl. And Destiny, this is when Destiny and I were friends. And she was like talking to me about it. And she was like, I'm going to have someone put down Cash. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I I literally have the text messages in this phone. Literally have them. And I was like, no, don't. Like, literally get your dog trained. Like, train your dog. Like, dogs can change. Like, your dog is still young. Um, And so, long story short, she, oh my God, I was so mad. I didn't talk to her for a little bit. Um, And it's like, I didn't know the address because she was... This is when they were living with, I'm pretty sure they were living with someone else because they had to move. So I didn't know the address. Like, you know how bad I wanted to like call someone and be like, get that dog, like do something. Um, So it's like, yeah. And it's like, I don't believe in putting down animals unless like they're on their actual deathbed and they're like, old like ancient like for everyone to see in here and you wanted everyone to hear it because you thought it would put you in a better light (laughs) not a chance do you know why one cash was put down supposedly in the south and i've had many say it happens all the time in the south does it make it right no not in my eyes but i want it said that i've heard it many times but It is because you were with Destiny for years. You likely knew where these people lived and you did nothing at the time. Literally have the text messages in this phone. Literally have them. She, oh my God, I was so mad. I didn't talk to her for a little bit. Um, And it's like, I didn't know the address. It's like, you know how bad I wanted to like call someone and be like, get that dog, like do something. You could have reported them. You didn't. You could have gotten your butt in the car and drove to wherever the dog was to help because of how much you hurt for cash, but you didn't. But let's say that I believe you and Ambie honestly had no idea where cash was. She knows the community that she's in. She has voiced it. I mentioned this video in one or two of the communities and found out information on Ambie and on Destiny I never thought I would. If she would have said one word of this at the time, it would have been handled. This community found where you worked, Ambie. They found where you and Destiny lived, found relatives, family, and friends. But Ambie never brought this up at the time of the event. I feel like this is extremely crucial for me to stress this point. All of the clips of Destiny in this video is not Destiny in the room. Amber is behind the camera giggling and laughing, recording and uploading these videos. She is not just a witness. She is compliant. She knew when this was happening to Cash in the live stream era. Now, this clip was only meant to drag Destiny, and rightfully so. Destiny is guilty of animal abuse in many forms, but Ambie not only witnessed all of the ones that I have shown her doing, but all of the ones that I haven't, Ambie recorded it, edited it, put it online, showing that you never cared before and you didn't care in this story. You never shared it before. You never shared it at the time. Only that Destiny was a piece of shit because you guys were in a tiff. It was not until you thought yourself betrayed when Destiny came out and told everybody what a horrible girlfriend you were. No, 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 no. You only cared when it could benefit you. It didn't hurt your heart. It didn't hurt you. You putting this up only showed what a horrible person you were because you held on to this story until it was too late. This just showed... What a horrible person you truly are, Abby. And one that I will take great pleasure in continuing to expose. Let's recap about Ambie being such a good fur mama. 
as she calls it. Monkey was an obese beagle that she abandoned with Crystal to be with Destiny. Ringo, Charlie, and Smokey did not seem to be her cats, but Crystal and her parents, but all seemed to be obese. Leia was not Amber's, but she recorded her being abused and put it on YouTube, and she is still likely with the roommate, who I do hope does not continue to hit train. Gracie, quote-unquote, missing, but don't worry, guys. Amber did nothing to help look for her. Wasabi, she filmed the constant mishandling of him when he was a kitten and older. He was denied medical attention when he needed it, and it is likely because of stress and mistreatment that he is now wanting to hide and is afraid of everything. Twinkie is obese and seems to have her needs mostly ignored unless Amber is with a girlfriend. Scarlet, she had for a few months, maybe, and then gave away because of some pet rule that her and Destiny did not seem to bother to find out about. Jax. When Ambi and Destiny broke up, she gave the cat to Destiny, who gave the cat to her mother, who forced the cat to be an outdoor cat after being an indoor cat his entire life, likely because he was an unfixed male, and sprayed every chance he could get. And Destiny assumes he died. Likely hit by a car. Rarity. Amber lied to us many times about the age that was needed to get her fixed before dumping her with Rafe, who was trying to get her spayed and then made Becky drive over there at 2 a.m. to get Rarity and finally got her spayed herself and let her lick at her stitches after asking so many questions. But out of all of the pets, she seems the most balanced. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. Another installment down in a series that I don't know what I'm going to call yet. And I know that it doesn't seem like much of a series, but I assure you, this is all leading up to something. Building to a head that will be revealed in my next installment. I think my next video I'm going to make, though, will be an AMA video, simply because this is a very heavy topic and these are really heavy videos. And they take a long time for me to put together because I have to step away from time to time because it bothers me so much. I want to thank those in my Discord, especially Gazette, because she has helped me a lot finding some clips that seem to have disappeared. I can mention the most obscure thing, and all of them can find it for me without any issue whatsoever, and I value them more than they will ever know. I also want to thank all of my members that are scrolling on the screen. Know you guys are truly amazing. If you would like more of me between my videos, which take about two to three weeks to produce, I stream Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays, and we have events on the Discord a few times a week as well. I want to remind everyone to take their meds. Oh, before I forget, these are my two dogs, Bilbo and Pippin. Bilbo being the big one that looks like Scooby-Doo. When we first got Bilbo, he was rescued. He was malnourished, and somebody had completely destroyed his psyche. He was afraid of loud noises. He was afraid of Overlord. He was afraid of me. He would normally hide and pee when you would go near him. He was covered in fleas, scabs, and the vet was not sure at the time if he would ever fully recover. That was six years ago, and now he is a much happier, healthier, and just all-around great dog. And I share this because I want you guys to know the importance of this video and the importance of rescuing a dog rather than buying one. And I also want to say two things to his previous owners who I never met. One, he's doing great now. And two, go fuck yourself.